Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Lindau and welcome to another one of Trocti's webinars talking about self-storage and self-storage development. In this installment, we're going to talk about different looks or architectural features you're going to have for your self-storage facility from different things you can actually do with the self-storage units themselves in the building to changes that you might or looks that you'll want in the office or the overall look and appearance of your facility. Now, when we're going to start with the actual building themselves and then we're going to work up to the office look and the exterior finishes. So with the um, building itself, one of the things you want to look at, what kind of building do you want? A very low pitch building, a high pitch building, if you're going to have an office that's attached to the property, uh, to the building, the self-storage building, separate it. And one of the things that a lot of people make mistake on, they got to really do some investigation to see what other architectural features that your community will enforce you to comply with. And we'll touch on that too. So we're going to start at the beginning. The most basic and um, self-storage building is what's called a quarter 12 pitch. So it's a very low pitch, it gets the water off, you use the standing seam roof. Here is one that's around 50 feet wide and um, very standard in our industry. This is the least expensive model. Now you can have it gable so the water drains on both sides. The next option is to do it lean-to. This is what I personally purchase. And uh, if you look on the left side of this picture, it also has what we call high side facet trim. So it looks like gutter and makes it look a little bit more appealing. Now, in about 20% of the projects that we sell, the owner wants to or is forced to by the local community to build a higher pitch roof. And the standard one that we build is a 312 pitch. 312 means for every uh, one foot you go in towards the middle of the building, it goes up three inches, okay? And um, now here's one that looks right here. Now there's other pitches you can have. Now in this photo, one is a 412 pitch. A lot of wood buildings, um, a lot of times their typical is a 412 pitch. We can build anything you want. And some people even go to the low as a 112 pitch. That's what that building in the back is. This customer had the higher pitch showing towards the front and the lower pitch later because it was a less expensive. Now, a lot of times when you are building, you like to keep the water off the front of the doors. But when you're doing a high pitch building, sometimes like a high pitch and you do it lean to, the buildings can look kind of strange. Here is a high pitch 312 pitch. I don't particularly care for this, but we can build these. Um, especially when the doors are on the high side, like we're showing here. So here's a lot of times people, architects draw something, the owner doesn't quite understand what it's going to look like until they see it and they go, wow, I didn't really like this. Or why didn't I put the doors much taller on the other side? Which we can do that, but you have to ask for it. So we're going to step back a second. And a lot of times, what is your architectural features you have to do? What does the architectural planning board want? And um, that's a lot of times in some rural communities, they don't ask anything. They just want to make sure it complies that it's structurally sound. But a lot of times they will have written rules. And I'm just going to give you an example of one here. Here is how they want to have all roof treatments in visual and it'll be written. And if you notice the circle I have there, they want a 412 pitch or greater. This means that they want only a high pitched building. And uh, a lot of uh, communities will say that. Not, not that many, but there will be some. For example, we build a lot out west in the United States, and everybody seems to be moving to Bozeman, Montana, where we have a number of facilities going. And if you want to build in Bozeman, Montana, they have a high pitch rule. They also have, they want soffits. So they want these overhangs. If you look at this photo, this is in Bozeman, and that is what is a requirement. So this is one of the things you have to ask for. Um, my nephew built a project here in Wisconsin, and in theirs, they only would accept a high-pitch 
project, and they wanted cupolas. That's the architectural features they wanted. They didn't force him to put overhangs, and to be honest, cupolas are way cheaper than to put on those soffits that that other one had shown you. In other areas of the country, they might have different rules. Here's again one that has a high pitch. This is out in Utah, where they also wanted block exterior on the end walls. They did not want any metal facing the street. And so they did high pitch with what's called a hip and block. Other areas when you get into these high pitches, you might need something called a dormer. Now, this is the front of the office. This is actually a remote office. This, uh, it looks very pretty. Um, there is no office where people are manned. This is all run from a kiosk. And so that's how that one is done. And here's more of an aerial view of one that had a number of dormers that would face towards the main street. Then inside, they would have no dormers, but it's just a regular high pitch. Okay? That's in Michigan. Now, sometimes here is one that they want to combine three different features. And that was by the building department. This is in Colorado. And so they wanted stone, ephus, and high pitch with an eyebrow, hip, which is, those are all things to get it through. Now, one of the questions we're asked a lot is, do we need an architect to develop our site? If you're building basic buildings that don't have an office, no. You can just use our plans and get approval. But if you're going to build an office that has a bathroom, they typically have to have the architect make sure the bathroom is ADA compliant in the drawing. Many people build their own separate offices because they get, uh, to be honest, wood will have more architectural features you can put in for, a, uh, for your project to hit your target that you want. And so you would have an architect draw the entire plan for that. And if you are building a multi-story, three-story, four-story building, you must, absolutely must, have an architect to handle all of the visual, um, you know, aesthetic features, but also all the life safety issues that you will have in with the um, access, uh, entrance, sprinkler systems um, to comply to all the, the hoops that you have to do. Now, back to the most basic. Here's the most basic, is in the corner of a building that you put in a small office, okay? And here is one being more incorporated down in Indiana. And uh, so that is the most basic. But a lot of people might attach a different type of, more of a house look to a office and just add it on the end of one of our buildings. And that is um, done. A lot of times when you put the building attached to the office. It makes um, the way the uh, gate system works. Here, this one is using a sliding gate. A lot of times if they want to use sliding gates and recess the gate, they will do what's next in this picture where they'll have the office outside and separated from the building. And then that gate will slide behind the office, if you look at that. So different your access and how you want it, whether you have the office attached or not attached. Most of the people will attach it because they get a little bit more square footage on their property. Okay. Now, here is a low pitch buildings behind, but there is a high pitch office that if you see the windows on top, they actually have more offices upstairs. This might even be a residence, I'm not sure. Most likely not. We are not building many residents anymore on self-storage sites. Here's one out in Idaho where they had a nice high-pitched office with a rustic look for Idaho. And then they went with high-pitched buildings behind with their green roofs to, to comply. And um, the... Uh, Next one here is down in Tennessee, where they built just a separate office. And they had it separated from the building and made it fancy with the architectural look of what Tennessee in the South has. 
because each area of the United States has their general kind of look and trends that you're looking to do. Many people want to put, if their sites are not that well visible, <clears throat> they will want to have a very tall office or a tower to bring uh, the visual eye to see what their facility is. And here's one that's in Wisconsin here that they had a nice tower to, and they attached it onto one of the buildings. Very typical type of thing. Those towers are typically around 20 feet tall. They're normally about 20 by 20, 20 at the most 30 by 30, but I prefer the 20 by 21. So, and normally they have a high pitch roof, and the pitch is normally 512 pitch. Now this one that you're looking here is a tower that's more of a flat lean-to. That's more unusual, but uh, in some areas, that's what they like. So these are all the architectural view, how you're getting your signage on it, how big a sign. Now, again, with uh, this photo I'm going to show you now is this person put a second floor on and it's purely for show. It's to improve the visibility, it illuminates the doors at night on top, and uh, nobody actually occupies any of the space up there. But it's all to get people's eye attention to the particular site. And if you look on the left, this is a high-pitched site up in Canada. So, back to the regional features that you can have, out west again, here is a look that this person had, kind of a wood rugged look in Colorado, and um, what features their office would be. Offices are typically around 30 by 30 or 30 by 40 size. There was a trend to get bigger and bigger offices. After the pandemic now, some people are trying to scale the office size down because they had so much of their business is remote or touchless. You don't have to have the people even come into the office. So when you're studying out what kind of office layout, you have to make some decisions with this office. Are you going to have a manager there all the time? Is it going to be part time? Are you going to put in a bathroom? You know, and uh, what particular size do you want? As I mentioned, um, I mine are 32 by 30 and 40 by 44 are the two last ones I built and the particular size. Mine might be a little bigger than most because I also add a maintenance area or a man cave where I can fix things and uh, keep all of my equipment right next to my office. That's what I like. So you have to figure out how you want to lay out your office and the size and whether you're going to have a kiosk or not on the outside. Here is a stick frame wood uh, re resident manager on top and also has a kiosk when they're not there. So they have this whole thing on the office and the rest of the buildings are very basic single story gable buildings. That is what this one is doing. Here's one out west again where all of the buildings are single story uh, gable but the office is a high pitch, is snow country. If you look at this photo, they have a lot of snow guards because to when the snow comes flying off, that it doesn't rip the gutter off. And that's their little architectural features they're looking at. Other, there's one out in Helena, Montana, that uh, they had a flat roof. So they used the built up roof system uh, which we are seeing a higher and higher trend of in a lot in multi-stories where the top floor is a built-up roof. Um, in here, they also have a kiosk on the outside, so it's renting, you know, 24 hours a day. And this is a very large site, around 100,000 square feet, that they had built. Now, Indiana, this next photo is in Indiana, and in Indiana is the number one state of having remote mini storage renting with kiosks of the entire United States. No question, they win. And uh, here, this office you see on this um, is high pitched. At first, building's a big climate control, but there's actually no manager there. It is run remotely. And so, um, but they had a separate little tower. Notice how that little, uh, probably 12 by 12 tower gave a nice definition to it. 
and that peak on it is at least 412 or 512 pitch. And so that is its look. Now, many times when you go into the architect's building department and try to get approval, they do not like to see a number of things. And they might not want to see any exterior doors. They want only brick block facade. They might have to have a lot of landscaping. So you do not see any of the doors or anything. You can hide it all behind here. Now, this photograph of this office is complying to everything that they wanted. They wanted a high-pitched building with block and brick with two different tones around the entire perimeter. If you notice inside the gate there, those are all basic low-pitch buildings that the guy filled, infilled the entire inside because they were less expensive than the high pitch. The high pitch typically costs about 20% more than the low pitch, at least. And so here is how this gentleman complied to hit outside of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Now, when you're reading what the architectural features are, a lot of times they do not want to see the doors, the roof line, any of the HVAC equipment, all kinds. So a lot of times how we get around it is that we will build parapet walls. You'll see this on regular grocery stores and on big, uh, um, all kinds of different uh, bigger commercial buildings. And so how we do it is a lot of times if it's very tall like this one is, we'll have to put red iron in it and then we'll have studs that you will screw in between that you will attach whatever um, type of material that you want, whether it's going to be dens glass with what's called ephas, dry vits, brick, stone, fake stone, whatever your particular look will be. Now this one that's down in Tennessee again, he had uh, some window awnings and what we call dry vit and put his name towards the front. Okay? So this is the number one thing we do with low pitch buildings to make it comply to the architect. And uh, in Michigan right now, there's one being built. If you even see this low building on the back, we can make it as tall as you want to have it. Like here, they wanted to hide the entire building, so they wanted the end wall of the building to be you know, four or five feet taller than the even buildings just to cover it all. So the first thing they put on is what's called dense glass, and then they uh, will put, this will actually be brick. They will attach to it with brick ties. That is the look that is going to go on here with a little different ephus on the jut out at the top of it. So with the parapets that you're seeing, look at the building on the left. This is in Maine, and where they're having their stone drive it on the front. Now, if you look on the building on the right, a regular one-story building, that is using um, the materials so you don't see steel. They might not allow it, you to see metal. And you can see their brick and their drive it between the two. And uh, they have windows back on the left where you have the climate controlled and you will illuminate it at night. So at night you can see in and know that it's a self-storage unit. Very very typical. Um, down, in, down in Illinois, this person did the same thing. He has his office, which is a double swing using commercial doors, just a parapet. Now this one is a not even near as big as the other ones you were looking at. And um, it gives the look that he needed. Um, and he did a very wide building because he was trying to get the coverage. So he had his office with the parkings up front, and some very wide. So the planning department, and when you do your research, they might say what you have to use, whether it's one type or multiple types of different architectural looks. I've showed you a few already of the different kind of looks. A lot of times, they want to show brick, and they want brick at different sizes, and they also added metal. A real trend here is that you need to have three different looks on the end wall. Not one, not two, but three. And this is also parapeted if you look on the photo on the left. Now the photo on the right is what's called Nietzsche brick. And that can be installed just over plywood. And that would cost half price of the real brick. 
something you can buy at a lot of the national department stores, um, home building stores, you can actually order it. And uh, now this one on the right follows the roof line. It is not parapeted. I prefer that method myself because it eliminates a chance for leaking on the building compared to a parapet because you have some flashing and you can have in snow country a lot of ice build up on that backside which could uh, freeze and contract and expand and could over time, over a decade or so, maybe cause a leak in the roof. So these are just two different examples. Now, typically they put all these stud walls down and you can put anything you want. Now, we have another thing that's coming into the industry is conforming to the energy code. And one of the options is to use an insulated sandwich panel. And they're used a lot with multi-story buildings where you will have them go in various directions with various looks to be able to make it all look, uh, appear to, and, and pass the energy code. Now, here is one where we put the uh, panels on first, and then the photo on the right is the exact same building, but finished off with what's called Nijiha panel that you would then screw on. And you would have soffits over the parapets, parapets with a soffit. And in the soffits, you'd have the lights, if you can see the lighting. Because I am uh, an architectural thing you do not want to miss out on is how your facility looks at night because I think a lot of the mini storages look better at night and people even understand it more at night um, than what it would have during the day. Now, you're seeing another trend in our industry that you would see from my other seminars is to make really, really, really large one-story buildings in lieu of going up to the multi-story. And this photograph here is a super wide building that has a drive-through component, if you actually look in the middle. Um, all the windows and that high peak in the front is all for show. This is not two stories high or anything. It's all just for show, for the look, for the road. And um, with this drive-through feature, it makes it so you get very good um, uh, access to all the units, Everything will be climate controlled inside, and, uh, but it's adding all of the glass that you see in the front, plus those will be insulated panels and stone panels. So there's your three components which are labeled to make it, make it work, just to show you a little different example. Now, I'm, a lot of people really spend a lot of money on their office because I say they want to have the show. And the show is this building right here. You see how tall it is? It's probably 22 feet high on the low side and 32 feet high on the other side. And in reality, this is only a one-story building. The top floor, there's nothing there. If you notice, there isn't even a window. It's all just empty space. And it's all to just have a really cool looking office that you can see from miles away that show you that's a mini storage. And this is a absolute trend in our industry. Here's another one out in Washington that here is his show. It's, uh, it's not a livable, livable thing, but it shows multiple little architectural features they all did in one place, the office. Not in the regular buildings, they're all cheap. So they took all their money and dumped it in the office. That is what they had done. So, and it's doing super well, this facility. Um, squim. The, uh, here is one where they made it more, very large office, and I've, met, I've showed this photograph before because this also passed a lot of the zoning issues because they had multiple different uh, businesses in the front here to be able to get a mixed use, to be able to build all the self-storage in the back. But they built it very high here, and uh, that will have a very large and high, um, high uh, uh, parapet wall in the front. Now, I was just driving out in Colorado, and I watched, I saw this uh, project out in Denver. And look at this. This is the guy's billboard. It attaches to a multi-story building. 
And it's just show. None of these units are rentable. There is no way to get up there. It's all for show. But it is showing you uh, the advertisement and the architectural features. I don't show a photograph of bef below, but it is a very basic self-storage below. But that is the, the, zing, the zing that they're trying to get. Also across the country, you're going to have people try to do themes with their architectural. Now here is a lighthouse theme that uh, somebody done out east. And uh, in other places of the country, you might have people want a rural look. And here's out in New Hampshire. Here is what this project looks like. It looks like a barn front office. And the first building has all these high-pitched roof and dormers, if you actually look at the mini storage with windows on the side. But actually inside is all basic building. It's just what's facing the street, what it will look like. In Pennsylvania, have another person following the farm look with his office, and everything else would be a regular building before it. And uh, here's another one in Wisconsin done similarly. But this is a white barn house. I call it Wedding Chapel Mini Storage. And uh, that's what it took. A lot of times with these things, it's uh, especially if you needed a zone change, man, you're going to be building something fancy because they have all the power to approve it or not approve it. So I'm going to get away now from the one-story buildings and talk about multi-story buildings. Okay? And with multi-story buildings, here's one right here that's in Nebraska, and it'll have the multiple different features. A lot of times it's more a modern look where they're using metal panel going horizontal that's tied to a brick with a trim piece going in between. You see here his two uh, openings, door openings, which people actually move in and out inside the inside the building. So especially in wintertime or hot summertime, it would uh, you will be cooler or warmer like you want to be. And uh, a next one now here is uh, separate features that you have in the front. A lot of the grass facing the front, the the front. Now on the sides here, that is all the insulated sandwich panel. They purchase them in two or three different colors and make it work out with the look that they're going for. Now, so they can even get fancier. Here is one that's in Nebraska, also a three-story building. It had a lot of glass, a lot of parapets higher um, than the side. If you look way to the left of this, they also have a number of one-story buildings that are drive up that are high pitch. So this is a three-story plus a bunch of one-story combinations uh, to get the maximum square footage they could on the particular site. And uh, one of the dangers that sometimes I see is in this next multi-story, it, to me, this looks like an apartment building. It's really a mini storage. Now, the sign is you'd have to read that sign really well to even know it's a self-storage. So there's a little danger that sometimes you can make it so uh, you don't even know what it is, whether it is a mini storage or not. That's why many of those windows especially illuminate at night. Now, this is during the day, I could tell. At night, I could tell that it, it works well. So the other thing you'll need an architect and the architectural features will be for is inside the office. How do you want to have your office? Here is a look here of the office. Normally your office, you will have everyone stand up to do business. So the level of the desktop is where you're standing, not sitting. And in many of the facilities, um, now this one, you know, it's the look the gentleman wanted. In this one, this is pretty stark here. And this is an extra space one. If I didn't show a picture to the left, but they will try to sell a lot of additional products, you know, uh, uh, boxes and tape and gloves and lights and things that you might use while you need it to move in and out. Okay. And um, the next one, this one's more the way I like it, that you would show some cameras. So that you show, there's three TVs showing you the particular um you know, all of the TV that you have on the property, making sure that people know that they're being watched 
while they're in the unit and that gives them security to rent. Also on this project, this photograph right here, you see the door to the left is actually into the hallway of the climate control. And I like that option in an office that you can walk directly into your climate control building. This next one is more to my liking. You have, well, this is just your place to hang out in a mini storage. Nobody really hangs out, but it looks nice. But they have, look, they have six televisions. This guy has hundred, you know, probably a hundred uh, TVs, or I'm not exactly sure, but uh, a lot of TV um, uh, cameras to go to a particular site because normally you can't almost not have enough of the cameras. And uh, my typical sites have around 60 to 70 cameras. And that's because I want to make sure I can see whoever damages my buildings and make sure I can look and see what the problems are. So that's why I like in the office that you design and plan for the TVs and the size of the TVs to make it work. Now, a lot of beach people that make sure it's really illuminated can really see inside the office so they can have tons and tons of windows like this one is shown. And so, a little different look. Um, some can have a modern look. A lot of them, though, have country looks more than modern looks. And uh, one of the last things you might want to think about in your office is you're going to have a little kitchenette for the, uh, the manager who's there to make his lunch or have water or refrigerator or whatever. And um, then the restroom, of course. Do you have a restroom that's just in the office or is it to the outside? I'm a fan of just having it access to the office, not access to outside. But these are some of the looks. So my main view of the office is it is more important. You spend most of the money for its impression on the road. A lot of people spend a ton of money on inside the office to make it look super fancy. Well, that's nice too, but the, uh, the outside is more important than the inside. And I've had a lot of people regret the office. I regret I didn't make it nicer. And that always happens two to three years in after they know they're making money. They made it cheesy or cheap, men on the cheap, and then kind of regret. So I'm just telling you, if you don't, you would want to spend the money up front if you have that capacity. So you don't regret it as what you're doing. And so, you know, good luck to uh, what you need with this, um, you know. And um, to, with your facility, what you want to do and minimize your problems. Now, if you have any questions you want to ask me, you know, you can. And uh, you remember, this is just one of multiple we webinars we are doing. And um, you can look them up, our past ones. And in the future, you could come to our seminars that we will be doing across the country. And I plan to have new material for all the seminars in the future to try to keep it updated and fresh to uh, what is happening in, the, um, in our industry. Our next one is going to be done on self-story construction in September of 2021. And uh, you can look at that. Now, one of the questions that always pops up is, you know, I want something super nice, but I don't have that much money. <laughs> what can I do to the bake the best curb appeal? Okay, And one of the things you do that is to try to keep all of your mini storage buildings the most basic because then you're saving money on all them. For example, if they make you put block between all of the buildings have to be blocked. You are spending a fortune on the foundation and the buildings, all the 70,000 square feet of mini story buildings, instead of just making them more basic and then putting the 150, 200,000 in for the office, you know, and making that as fancy as possible. So, um, you know, one of the cost effective ways is to, um, parapets are cheaper than having the whole building higher. Having all the buildings at high pitch is more expensive than low pitch. 
So therefore, building just the facade look in the front is cheaper than making the whole project uh, a certain particular look. And um, it's very hard to ask. A lot of the ones I've shown you are expensive. Um, some aren't as expensive as others. And uh, the, uh, if there's any other things you want, you can also email uh, Ask the Expert at trocti.com or uh, email me or any of the salesmen directly, and we can help you with your particular needs. I want to thank you for watching this video, and if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call, and good luck with your self-storage project. Thanks.